Time for our ETF spotlight. Taking a look today at XLY, consumer discretionary trading up more than a percent. Nike by far the key story here. Reporting a big beat surging on strong online sales, global demand despite the trade tensions between the U.S. and China and raising its outlook. Joining us now is SW Retail Advisor President Stacy Widless. And I guess people are asking what does this say about the global consumer, Stacy? besides the fact that the global consumer wants Nike products? Yeah, I mean, I think what this tells us is that um, the companies that are offering innovation, customer experience, and differentiation are winning here. I mean, we went into this report with, you know, all the fears in the world, China slow down. I mean, ASOS recently told us that the men's footwear category was meaningfully slowing down. So we went in worried across the board here, and they blew the numbers away, not only geographically on a two-year basis, but also in every single category. So it shows that the, the innovation that they have pushed through in the last year after really getting killed by Adidas for several years has worked and paid off. So David asked me earlier about the percentage of sales that are actually digital. I found out it's 15% of revenues right now. And, you know, they talked about digital more than 50 times on the call yesterday, which, as you know, they've been doing that for the last few quarters. What is the digital strategy? What differentiates it for Nike? Yeah, I mean, they're, um, you know, not only they're looking at 15% now and the goal is to get to 30% of the business by 2023, and they're going to blow that that number away. They're way ahead of expectations already here. But, you know, they're not only online successful, they're using um, digital in stores and integrating their product with the consumer. You can go into the New York flagship store um, and you know, make your own product and, and make it ex exclusive to yourself. So, you know, I think they're using digital in a way that's making product specific to the consumer. But also, you know, as they've talked about, um, the direct business for them is still quite small. And as that transitions to a bigger piece of the puzzle, the margins in this company just lift over the next several years. So they did talk about China in one sense, saying it's strong. I mean, 31 percent revenue growth tells you the story. They said there's no impact from the trade uh, tensions between the U.S. and China, Stacey. But what if those tensions got worse? What if we saw an escalation in the new year between the U.S. and China and more tariffs that impacted footwear and apparel? What would that mean for Nike? They didn't lay that out. Sure. I mean, that's always a risk here. But what they've said is that there has been no impact. And I think some of the really smart things that they're doing, what are they doing in the Chinese market to gain share? They're working with Tmall, Alibaba. You know, they sold 40 percent more pairs of shoes this year than last year on Singles Day. They delivered five million units in five days, and they did that through partnerships. So I think that's also really important to point out. If you have the product, the partnerships, um, not only from, from the likes of Alibaba, but the correct wholesale partners in the mall. Um, yeah. You know, your model is sustainable even in a slowdown. So very quickly, is this the sort of report that boosts the competitors across the board or hurts the competitors in that Nike's stealing share? Well, I think it's very clear that Nike is stealing share. And, you know, I've been out in the market over the past month looking at the footwear sector. And clearly there are basically no markdowns on Nike product. I would not say the same for the competition. So clearly this is a share story and the likes of Adidas that were the darling two years ago have really fallen behind in terms of innovation and Nike's just pulling out in front and I see this as continuing over the next year into 2019.